Lenovo is advertising this as the most advanced Chromebook plus laptop on the market. It's a Google powered operating system with all the promises of AI making your life easier. And at the heart of the experience is an exciting new chip from MediaTek. We're going to take a tour through this software hardware combination and chat about why I think this is a new era for Chromebooks and laptops in general. The folks at MediaTek are sponsoring this video to chat about Lenovo's new Chromebook Plus 14, the first laptop powered by the Companio Ultra. This is a chip I've been really anxious to see in person. It's an ARM chip, different from the solutions offered by AMD and Intel. This is a style of chip I've been advocating for for years now, and we're starting to see this kind of technology showing up more in consumer-facing products. MediaTek has been on a roll lately. There are only four generations into making premium phone chips. The Dimensity 9000 line is capable of delivering near laptop grade performance while respecting the power consumption limitations of a phone. The Companio Ultra chip builds on that phone experience, but we have a lot more room and battery to play with here. The Lenovo Chromebook Plus 14 is kind of exactly what it calls itself. It's a 14 inch Chromebook Plus. We're not getting too fancy with the naming here. I, I feel Google could have helped us out a little. Chromebook Plus is the branding we'll see when a Chromebook is a little more powerful, higher end hardware, and of course, supporting more advanced AI features. Lenovo isn't being too precious. There's, there's no brand name. It's not a think or an idea or a yoga or a legion. It's Lenovo's 14 inch version of a Chromebook Plus laptop. But it is a lovely machine and MediaTek sent over the nicer spec version with the OLED touchscreen. I really like Lenovo's top bar for the cameras because I still think it's dumb to notch a display for a webcam. Ooh, -hoo, spicy take there. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gig of storage, fingerprint security in that bottom shell, dual USB-C, one on each side, definitely like to see that, with a USB-A for peripherals and a headset jack. The design is really clean and silver. There's something really nice here. Now, the last Chromebook I really lived in was the Pixelbook Go. That was a couple years ago. I've used a bunch of Chromebooks since, but the Pixelbook still gets fired up in our house from time to time. The design of that Pixelbook seems to have inspired other newer Chromebooks, like the textured undercarriage. Lenovo uses that idea here, and I really like that feeling on my fingers. Picking up a laptop and have something to grip, something to hold onto without adding a skin or stickers or a case. And that usability philosophy runs more than skin deep. This laptop rated mil standard 810H for drop and shock resistance. Some of those durability metrics Lenovo is always very proud of. The keyboard similarly has that satisfying tactile action, but it's not clacky or loud with really subtle and pretty key lighting. It's a great typing experience above a large and excellent trackpad. I gotta give credit, Google tried to impress us with a nicer Chromebook years ago and the idea struggled to gain footing. I think the follow-ups today are likely to make more of an impact. The practicality of a Chromebook is one of the main selling points, but you know, some consumers will still appreciate a nicer version of that more practical idea. A more expensive Chromebook should feel nice, but they still shouldn't break the bank. Arriving cost competitive against mid-price Windows machines, and of course, undercutting a MacBook Air. Chromebooks have always been performance frugal. A Chromebook with a less powerful processor will often feel snappier. It'll work faster than a similarly configured Windows laptop. Windows, just as an operating system, demands a bit more performance. Google's Chrome OS is a more streamlined operating system, making it a more responsive experience on modest hardware. Now, Windows is slowly embracing ARM chips, but Chromebooks have used these kinds of mobile processors for a while now. MediaTek is already the number one supplier of ARM chips for Chromebooks. As opposed to Windows, there are fewer teething pains to worry about, and there's less worry that legacy applications won't run well on ARM. In fact, as you use an ARM chip on a Chromebook, the support for Android apps might be better than if you use a Chromebook with 
another chip. In the past, the ARM chips we'd used in Chromebooks were often slower, but they would use less battery power. Great solutions for modest web browsing style workloads, and they got fantastic battery life. With MediaTek's newest Companio Ultra, we're getting much better performance, and we still get the battery life benefits of a chip inspired by smartphones. This is now a lot more like taking a premium expensive Android tablet for a spin. This is overkill powerful for the majority of tasks we think of on a Chromebook. You can open a bunch of browser tabs and write a document and edit spreadsheets, stream movies and music, and you're not going to tax this machine. It chews through those kinds of lifestyle tasks easily. Now, when I'm testing smartphones, I like to look at things like editing video or podcasts or processing batches of photos. I don't think a lot of folks think of a Chromebook for trimming a video, but the Lenovo is incredibly fast at cutting up a 4K clip just to trim that clip down. Something I think a lot of people do before they send a video to a friend or upload to a social media site. It's something simple, so people expect it to happen quickly. That's not something you want to wait on, and you're not going to wait on that here. We still got to get a little nerdy, though. The batch photo processing test I run is kind of silly, too hundred raw photos timed to see how long the batch takes and to see how much the machine might throttle when it starts to run warm. The MediaTek Companio Ultra performs very well, again, in premium Android tablet territory and slows down very little over the course of this test. Even though we don't have fans loudly spinning up, we don't see significant thermal throttling. It's a very different experience. It's a very different auditory experience over using Chromebooks that had Intel processors where you'd need those fans to kick on. Now, this isn't exactly scientifically accurate, but while running that test, a test that took 17 minutes to complete, keeping the CPU working harder, the laptop, while it was at 90% battery, was estimating that it had six hours of battery remaining. After I finished the test, that estimate climbed back up to 12 hours. I do not believe I would have gotten exactly six hours of high CPU use, but it is encouraging to see how much confidence there is in the runtime. In general, battery life estimates are always tricky to pin down. Measuring using Google's web browsing tests, this is the longest running laptop Google has ever tested. In practical operation for me, this is one of the best mixed-use laptops I've ever handled. You open it up and surf the web a little. You open it and watch a movie. Then you let it sit for a day or two with almost no idle power loss. And then you pick it up again and you're right back where you left off. It feels a lot like a tablet. You pick it up and put it down as you need to. And, and that's a slightly different metric right? And we're talking about practical use. So I can show hours of peak CPU usage, but it's unlikely that's how it's going to be used. Hours of constant use, it's, it's far more likely in reality, that's days of mixed use before you're going to need to top that battery off again. I truly believe battery is one of those significant metrics that we don't always pay attention to in our reviews. Now, if you ask a consumer or if you ask your family and friends, do you want more giggle flips and more horsepower and more mega pickles, or would you just want to use your gadgets hours more on a single charge? I feel a lot of folks out there want gadgets they need to babysit less, and this feels like it's always ready for you. We still want the performance, but in this era of power efficiency, it's not scary leaving the house with a battery at like 40%. That's going to get you through hours of work at a coffee shop. And if you can plug it in, there is fast charging. An hour plugged in got me from a 10% low battery warning to over 80%. Another thing pioneered on mobile devices, we're expecting more AI and machine learning processing happening on device with little coprocessors called NPUs. I'll say it outright, I am absolutely an AI skeptic when we talk about massive data centers and cloud processing. But I think there are a lot of cool, helpful things that can happen with local processing. Low power coprocessors in keeping user data 
on device instead of uploading everything to the cloud. Chromebooks have a reputation for being fancy Chrome web browser computers, but there's a lot more happening on Chromebooks these days. The one that really impressed me, this sounds so simple, but to do it well, it's really cool. Not only do we get almost real-time speech-to-text transcription, the Chromebook can process that and differentiate between people speaking. So if you're taking notes uh, at a meeting or if you're listening to an interview, you have a near real-time transcription ready and different participants are labeled. No waiting, no delay, no uploading to the cloud to have a remote server process your audio clip and send a text file back down to you. It's all done right here. A whole suite of tools are arriving for Chromebooks with similar offline processing for photo editing, subject isolation and background expansion, tools to read text in images and copy that so you can paste it into another document. And Lenovo's really proud of this. They're the first to showcase a new grouped information feature. Your Chromebook can organize documents, browsers, calendar, messages, and make that a sort of topic tab. So all the info you need on that one subject is accessible in one place. The more we can organize our own data, and for me, the more we see these tools move offline using local compute power, the more helpful I think AI will actually become. If I'm planning a trip through rural New Mexico and I can't count on the fastest 5G data connections out in the middle of the desert, then a bunch of fancy cloud features are not useful to me. I can't count on cloud AI when I might need it most, but I can have local machine performance back me up when I don't have the most reliable internet connection. Google, Lenovo, app developers, more of that please. I like that a lot. Now I've always appreciated Chromebooks for making a mass market computer more accessible. I think a lot of people could jump right into this and use it perfectly fine as so many of our services are going through web browsers and apps anyway. But Chromebooks have been special to me as they got me back into some really nerdy stuff. The main focus is absolutely on Google Cloud services, but it was my Pixelbook that inspired me to get back into Linux. You can use your Chrome browser for almost everything, or you can install more traditional desktop programs. Linux apps have supported ARM chips really well for a while now, and the performance boost we get from the Companio Ultra is readily felt. Launching photo editing programs or alternative document solutions, this performance makes the system even more competitive against Windows machines and MacBooks. And it doesn't take a lot of work. We're digging into just a little bit of the geeky stuff, and you really can get two computers in one here. I can't stress this enough. I know I'm, I'm disclosing this as a sponsored video, but the transition to ARM chips for consumer PCs is the single most important tech evolution I've been watching for in the consumer space over the last five years. I've been preaching it so hard for years now, and we're finally seeing that promise realized. Better and better performance, fewer compromises, but while improving battery life is exactly the combination consumers have been begging for. MediaTek has been playing with Chromebooks for a while now, but entering the space with a new, higher performance chip is really exciting to see. We spent far too long shopping laptops with very little choice or competition in what chip you could buy. Companio Ultra brings a massive competitive option to the table, and using it in this Lenovo <laughs> makes perfect sense. I'm pretty confident calling this the best Chromebook of 2025, and MediaTek deserves a lot of that credit. I think people are really gonna like this experience, and they're gonna like it because of what this chip brings to the table. I gotta send another shout out to the folks at MediaTek for sponsoring this video. You should definitely look this system up. I'll be leaving links down in the description for this Lenovo and where you can read up more on the new Companio Ultra. I hope you'll check some of this stuff out. It's exactly the kind of geeky information that helps us techies 
make better recommendations for our family and friends. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Actually, the sharing is probably the most important part these days, what with all the algorithms and whatnot. I love digging into some new hardware. I love digging into some new silicon. And of course, the folks who get to see the results of my testing and reviewing first are my incredible patrons. All the folks over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list of names. Scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart, as these are the people that are helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. They're basically the coolest tech pals in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. I hope you'll consider joining the community at patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Now, you know where you can find me across the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy, basically everywhere these days, but I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little on the Blue Skis, and a lot less so on a lot of those other social media sites, and I will catch you all on the next video.